The movie begins when a narrator states, Once, in a time before time, God breathed life into the universe, the light gave birth to angels, the earth gave birth to man, the fire gave birth to the jinn, creatures condemned to dwell in the void between the worlds. One who wakes a jinn shall be given three wishes. Upon the granting of the third, the unholy legions of the jinn shall be freed to rule the earth. Fear one thing in all there is, fear the jinn. The next scene is set in Persia during the year 1127 AD, with the jinn asking a Persian emperor to make his second wish. The emperor asks the jinn to show him wonders. The jinn uses his powers to torture and mutilate people in the palace. Before the emperor can make his third wish, Zoroaster, a sorcerer, interrupts and states that upon the third wish granted to the one who woke the jinn, a gateway will open between the worlds and the evil race of the jinn can live on earth. The sorcerer then reveals a a fire opal. The Dijin is sucked into the jewel, where he remains captured. In present-day America, Raymond Beaumont is supervising workers as they lower a box containing an antique statue of Ahura Mazda onto a ship's deck. The worker who is lowering the crate is drinking on the job and accidentally drops it from his crane, killing Beaumont's assistant and destroying the statue. It breaks open and a dock worker finds the fire opal inside which he steals and pawns. The jewel ends up at Regal Auctioneers, where boss Nick Merritt gives it to appraiser Alexandra Amberson to examine. Her examinations of the jewel wake the gin. Thinking she saw something inside the jewel, Alexandra takes it to her lab worker best friend and potential love interest Josh Eichmann to analyze. Later, as he is collecting data, light reflections cause the gem to explode and the jinn is released. The lab is destroyed and the jinn grants Josh a wish to relieve him from his physical pain. After Josh agrees, he screams in agony as the jinn steals his life essence. Alexandra gets a vision of Josh's predicament while she attempts to call him on the phone. She can only cry as she sees Josh die slowly while the jinn's body Body transforms into something more human. The Jin still doesn't look human after the transformation, but now he can stand up and walk. Before leaving the lab, the Jin takes the shattered pieces of the fire opal. When Alexandra arrives, she is distraught to see Josh in a body bag. Detective Nathanson asks her what Josh was working on, so she tells him he was analyzing a gem for her. Somewhere in the city, a homeless man waits outside a pharmacy to ask customers for spare change. The pharmacist comes out of the store to scold him, so the homeless man angrily yells out his wish that the pharmacist dies in horrible ways. The Dijin hears him and asks the man if he's willing to lose his soul to make his wish come true. The man says he'll trade his soul for far less and tells the Dijin that he wishes the pharmacist would die of cancer. Inside the store, the pharmacist suddenly collapses and lumps start to appear on his skin. Alexandra sees the incident in her mind while Nathanson is questioning her. After the pharmacist dies, the Dijin asks the homeless man if it was worth his soul. The man runs away in terror upon seeing the jinn's face. As Alexandra broods over Josh's death at home, her sister Shannon assures her that it wasn't her fault. Alexandra insists that she had something to do with it because there was something strange with the fire opal. Shannon offers to contact Alexandra's psychiatrist because she thinks Alexandra is imagining things the way she used to after failing to save their parents from a fire. Shannon fears that her sister will have the same nightmare she had that time, so she points out that Alexandra saved her from the fire, and it wasn't her fault that she couldn't save their parents as well. Alexandra contends that the things she's experiencing now are nothing like the last time, so she vows to find out what really happened with Josh. The following day, Alexandra tracks down the man who pawned the fire opal and learns that it came from Beaumont's statue. When she asks Beaumont about the god represented by the statue, he refers Alexandra to a folklore professor named Wendy Durlip. Meanwhile, the Jin goes to a morgue in a university to steal a man's face, but he is interrupted by a student who is horrified by his appearance. He surmises that the student doesn't want to see what he's doing, so the jinn manipulates him into making such a wish. When the student agrees, the jinn uses his powers to shut his eyelids. 
After wearing the face, Alexandra sees the djinn in a vision, so she suddenly screams in the middle of a conversation with Beaumont. Before leaving, Beaumont invites Alexandra and Shannon to a party to celebrate the acquisition of the ancient statue. Later, Alexandra meets with Durlith to ask her about the fire opal. The professor tells her that a genie was imprisoned inside the jewel, but it's not like the genie depicted in movies. The Arabians regard this genie as something to be feared. At that exact moment, the djinn visits a clothing store to buy a suit. When he pays for the clothes, he entices the woman to wish to keep herself beautiful forever. The woman turns into a mannequin when she makes the wish. Durlith notes that the djinn are obliged to grant three wishes to the person who wakes them, but their true goal is to conquer Earth. She warns that the djinn are more powerful than humans can imagine, and they're very malevolent. Soon, the djinn visits Nathanson at the police station to ask for Alexandra's address. During their conversation, the djinn notices Nathanson looking at a suspect being interrogated by another officer. He expresses his wish that the suspect would commit murder when there are eyewitnesses, so the djinn makes it come true. The suspect suddenly grabs a gun from an officer and shoots two detectives. While Nathanson and the other cops are subduing the man, the djinn looks inside a folder on Nathanson's table and finds Alexandra's business card. When Nathanson notices him, the djinn gives the suspect the strength to resist the cops trying to subdue him. The suspect pulls off the jaw of an officer before the cops manage to kill him. At home, Alexandra does her own research and finds out that the gem acts as a doorway that can be opened from either side. Before the djinn could release his brethren, he must charge the stones by gathering human souls who asked him to grant their wishes. The djinn must then find the human who awakened him and grant this person three wishes. That night, the djinn goes to the regal auctioneer's office to find Alexandra. However, the guard wouldn't let him in, so the djinn coaxes the man to make a wish. The guard says he wants the djinn to leave, so he has no choice but to do the guard's bidding. As he walks away, the djinn blurts out that he has to go inside, so the guard tells him that he would love to see the djinn attempt to go through him. The djinn then turns the guard into glass and walks right through him. When he gets into Nick's office, the djinn asks for Alexandra's address. Nick wouldn't tell him, so the djinn demonstrates his powers when Nick tells him he'd like an artifact on his table to be more valuable. The djinn turns the artifact into gold and pours out several pieces of diamonds from the object. Nick still refuses to give the address to the djinn, but he caves when the djinn offers him anything he could wish for. When Nick asks for a million dollars, the djinn crashes the plane where Nick's mother is aboard. Before the flight, his mother had signed a flight insurance policy that listed Nick as the beneficiary. While coaching the girls' basketball team the next day, Alexandra couldn't take her mind off the gem, so she borrows Shannon's phone to call Durlith. When she returns it to Shannon, the djinn borrows the phone and redials the number Alexandra called. After he returns the phone, Alexandra sees the djinn in the crowd, but he disappears when one of the players blocks her view. When Alexandra gets home, Nathanson calls her to warn her that a man is looking for her. The call is interrupted when the djinn starts claiming the souls of everyone who made a wish. Alexandra screams in anguish upon seeing it happening in a vision. As soon as it is over, she receives a call from the djinn, who tells her that only she can set the souls free. Alexandra visits Durlith's apartment to tell her that the djinn is after her, and the gem has been charged with people's souls. She asks Durlith what she could do, but the professor notes that all the spells and the sorcerers that could deal with the djinn are long gone because they now live in the Age of Reason. Alexandra realizes that she'll have to rely on herself, but Durlith scoffs at her and notes that she can't possibly prevail against the powerful djinn who had existed before time. Alexandra gets upset and tries to leave, but the djinn stops her. The djinn reveals that he killed Durleth after she asked him to release her from her fear when he showed her his true face. The djinn asks Alexandra for her wishes, so she tells him that she wants him dead. The djinn grants it as a free wish and shoots himself in the head to demonstrate that he is eternal and cannot die. Alexandra feels that she has no choice but to make a wish, so she tells the djinn that she wants to know what he is. 
The Dijin takes her inside the fire opal and shows her the horrific things he's doing with the souls he captured. The Dijin sends a reptilian creature to chase after her, so Alexandra runs. When the Dijin shows up behind her, Alexandra tells him that she didn't wish for him to be inside the gem with her. The Dijin argues that she should have stated her wish more carefully. He threatens to go after Shannon, so Alexandra uses her second wish to go to her apartment without the Dijin. Alexandra discovers that Shannon has already gone to Beaumont's party, so she drives there in a hurry. When she arrives, the Dijin appears, so Alexandra asks the security guard to stop him from following her. The Jin tempts the guard with the thought of escaping from his monotonous job and doing something more exciting. When the guard agrees, he ends up in a big glass water tank. When Alexandra finds Shannon at the party, she persuades her to leave, but she insists on staying. Shannon shares that the man she met on the basketball court is there. She points her toward the direction of the Jin, who has already introduced himself to Beaumont. When she turns around, Shannon has left so Alexandra tries going after her. The Jin tells Beaumont that he once attended a party that was so rambunctious that it was remembered for centuries. Beaumont says he'd love to host such a party, so the Jin uses his powers to cause mayhem just as he did centuries ago in Persia. The Jin brings art pieces and other inanimate objects to life so that they can kill the guests. He shows his true face to Beaumont, who runs away in sheer terror. The Jin notices Alexandra chasing after Shannon, so he distracts her by setting several guests on fire. When the Jin catches up to Alexandra, he tells her that she can stop the chaos by wishing it all away. Still, Alexandra refuses to make her third wish. Alexandra runs when one of Beaumont's statues come to life and attacks her. When she comes across Beaumont in the hallway, she asks him if he's seen Shannon, but he starts to choke before he can answer. A monstrous creature emerges from Beaumont's mouth and grabs Alexandra's foot with its tentacle. She breaks an antique vase and stabs the tentacle with a shard. When the security guards arrive, the statues of warriors come to life and attack them with swords and arrows. The guards shoot the statues with their guns, but to no avail. And so, the statues kill the guards one by one. The Jin finally corners Alex and traps Shannon, trying to scare Alex into making the ultimate third wish. Alex wishes that the dock worker had not been drinking on the job two days ago, undoing the events that followed, and presumably reviving the Djinn's victims back to life, and trapping the Djinn in the opal. The dock scene is shown again, and the now sober operator has no trouble lowering the crate containing Ahura Mazda. Alex goes to see Josh at the lab. He notices that Alex is strangely pleased with herself, but she will not say why. Back on the statue of Ahura Mazda, which is now in Beaumont's private collection, the camera zooms inside the jewel and shows us the Jin on a throne, waiting to be released. 